Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with news of AMD and the RX 5500 XT graphics cards. Yeah, we kind of knew that those GPUs were coming. After all, if you look at the RX 5500, you can clearly see that it's not using the full fat Nave 4. 14 die. The Nave 14 die comprised of 24 compute units, whereas the RX 5500 non XT features just 22. As a quick reminder, the RX 5500 non XT is using GDDR6 memory and 128 bit bus and features 22 compute units or 1408 shaders if you prefer. But the full Nave 14 die uh, has the same memory configuration, but does have a difference in the number of compute units. The full die is 24 compute units, 1536 shaders, which will obviously give a subtle bump in performance, though we think that the memory clock frequency is going to be identical. There is also supposedly a slightly higher clock frequency on the GPU core as well, around 50 MHz is fought. So if we take a peek on the Euro-Asian Economic Commission website, there are actually several models of the RX 5500 XT that are listed. These are all MSI models, just for your FYI. And we also see several non-XT variants as well. Although curiously, we also have a couple of listings for 1650 Ti. We have the 1650 Ti Ventus, and there's a couple of models of that. One is an XS 4G and the other is an XS 4G OC, uh, which obviously indicates that that's an overclocked model. And um, that's interesting because from what we understand anyway, the 1650 Ti is not going to be a thing. It's actually going to be the 1650 Super. Um, but we'll get into that in a moment because we think we have the final specifications of the 1650 Super. So we'll talk about that in just a second. I'm pretty damn certain uh, that we will see the 5500 XT launch because it makes no sense for them not to, given, I know I'm repeating myself here, that we have the full Narve uh, 14 die which is not being used with the 5500, so for AMD to not uh, make use of those uh, fully uh, functioning cores would just be absolutely bonkers, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, I think that the cards are going to be quite interesting and obviously going to be quite competitive given what we know about the performance of the 5500 non-XT. And now I'm going to shift gears. I'm not doing things alphabetically as normal. I generally tend to go through a piece of news alphabetically according to the company for those who are new to the channel. Uh, but I'm actually going to shift to NVIDIA because I just mentioned the 1650 Ti and, uh, well... It just makes sense to transition to the 1650 Super News. According to videocards.com, the performance of these cards is actually going to be a little better than what we anticipated. The rumour had it that we would see 1024 to 1152 CUDA cores. But the reality of the matter seems to be, at least according to videocards.com's source, that it will contain 1280 CUDA cores, which would be... Uh, on par, at least CUDA cores wise, with the GTX 1060, and it will be using the TU116 core. Uh, the cheapest supermodel on the 1650 series would have 4 gigabytes of memories, and we would also see a 128 bit memory interface, of course. Uh, so it looks like it's going to require 100 watts of power, so that's uh, 25 watts higher than the non-Super variant. Meanwhile, the GTX 1660 Super, this is going to be real quick, uh, still has 1408 CUDA cores, 88 TMUs, 48 uh, ROPs, but what we have learned is that it will actually demand, wait for it, 5 watts of additional power because of GDDR6 memory, uh, which is obviously kind of titchy. Uh, according to the specification sheet that videocards.com have seen, it will actually require uh, an 8-pin power connector, at least one of those, which isn't much, admittedly. Uh, so yeah, it's 
One of those interesting cards, to be honest, the 1660 Super. We saw a benchmark of it I covered yesterday, and it's a little bit faster than I expected, to be honest with you. Although, of course, that was only Final Fantasy XV benchmark, which doesn't give us a great overview of performance. Um, as for the 1650 Super, there's actually quite a lot separating it from the vanilla 1650. The 1650 vanilla contains 896 CUDA cores compared to 1280 of the 1650 Super, and the 1650 Super uses the same core as the 1660. I suspect that AMD's Narve cards is going to put up quite a fight with the GTX 16 series from NVIDIA, and it's going to be really fascinating to see exactly what happens in terms of the market from NVIDIA's products, because once again, the 1650 card is like 150 bucks, and then you've got the 1660 Vanilla, which is like 220 US dollars, and then you've got the 1660 Super, which is like $10 more. So you would think that either the 1660 is going end of line, or we would see the 1650 Super going to be like 170 US dollars, 180 US dollars, and then for like 20, 30 bucks more, you've got the 1660 Vanilla, and then for $10 more, you've got the 1660 Super, which is, well, crowded, to say the least. Anyway, we will see a launch of the 1660 Super on the 29th of October, and uh, the 1650 Super is going to launch on the 22nd of November, so around a month separating them. My personal opinion is that I'm more interested in the 1650 Super, uh, but obviously it's going to heavily depend upon the pricing of the card and what AMD can counter with with the RX uh, Nave series. And now we're going to move over to several pieces of Intel news. The first of which concerns Intel XE, or their discrete line of GPUs, which is scheduled to launch next year. This is what Raja Kodori has been spending his time tinkering with at Intel. And while Intel have attempted to launch discrete graphics card in the past, i.e. Larrabee, it has never actually come to a finished product that has appeared on store shelves. Well, Intel XE looks like it's going to be very different. And we actually have engineering samples that have started to creep up in the wild, plus several announcements from Intel themselves. There are a couple of actual entries on the Euro-Asian Economic Commission for Intel. I'm going to start with the uh, CPU side things first. We actually have a Comet-like processor, and it is an 8-core CPU. Uh, so that's not super exciting. We know, of course, they are in the wild. But, uh, by the way, credit to Momomo on Twitter for this discovery, as well as the discovery of another entry on the EAE Union website, and that is of the discrete graphics. This is DG1 External FRD1 Accessories Kit. So obviously this is a development kit, and once again is labelled DG1, which is quite important because... We actually have some inkling of what DG1 is, thanks to uh, a driver which Intel accidentally put online for a little bit, although it was swiftly pulled off off, uh, off the internet, and Intel attempted to scrub all references to the driver, and it seems like DG1 is a lower power variant of uh, Intel's upcoming XE line of cards, so it is not going to be like the 512 execution unit variant, as according to this list, it says IDG1 LP Dev, and that would most likely indicate low power, of course, and then you've got several which are denoted as HP, which we can assume is either high performance or high power. But wait, there's more. Chris Hook, who is, of course, the marketing chap over at Intel Graphics, also tweeted, just two words, but they're very telling, it's alive, with an exclamation mark. Obviously, this indicates that the GPU is, well, alive. Now, I highly doubt that, of course, the GPU just came on this second. In fact, um, it was Bob Swan who recently said, uh, this was actually during the Q3 earnings call, that Intel had powered on the company's DG1 GPU, and that it was, quote, an important milestone, end quote. 
And of course, this product is going to be based on their 10nm process. Intel have actually released a, a deck for their uh, Q3 2019 earnings call. And it's actually quite interesting because according to this, 10nm yields ahead of expectation for client and data center products. I'll get more into the uh, 10nm stuff in just a second. But they've also uh, said that they are moving back to a two to a two and a half year Candace. And furthermore, their 7nm GPUs are on track for the release on 2021, which is... Meaning, at least in theory anyway, they will be doing fairly well on the GPU side of things, although I still want to see what the performance of their discrete GPUs is. It also appears like, anyway, from what they've said, although it may be that they're not disclosing it, that only the low power variant is so far fully functional, or at least turning on, is how they're describing it. So maybe the high performance ones aren't working yet to this degree, but you also have to remember that the cards are not scheduled to launch until next year. In the very same earnings call, he also went on to proclaim that the Ice Lake server CPUs will be on track for launch in the second half of 2020, which is obviously going to be extremely important for Intel, given the immense amount of pressure they're already facing from AMD and their Roam CPUs, and Milan is not... Let's just say it's not going to be a slouch. Let's just be honest. So, for them to release Ice Lake is going to be extremely imperative. Uh, but they also said that the uh, 10nm products that they are planning to release include things such as... Uh, AI inference accelerators, uh, SOCs, which are for 5G, Xeon CPUs, network, and once again, they're pushing the fact that they are launching a discrete GPU. But, of course, what is missing there is any mention of desktop 10nm. And lastly, while I'm on the subject of Intel, uh, Intel have increased the 14nm wafers by 25% this year but are also planning to increase the production of 14nm by an additional 25% next year. And this is also uh, in combined with another 25% for 10nm as well. Uh, according to uh, Bob Swan, he said that there has been a shortage of 14nm production capacity. Uh, we've kind of known about that and discussed that a few times in the past. And he has noted that we're, quote, letting our customers down and they are expecting more from us, end quote. With any luck, you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then drop a like on it because, of course, it helps us out a ton. And also get subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon as well because in the land of YouTube, well, subscribing is now just not enough. But I'm going to let you all go and have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.